Hi, it's Chef and Builder Jeannie Pendleton. We're back in the kitchen where I am canning tomatoes. Now this time is the first time that I have used my steam juicers by Cuisine. Right here is the box, remember? We've talked about my Cuisine uh, steam juicer quite often. And what I did is I just pulled out my bottom tray of my second oven here. And, uh, and I had actually two juicers uh, tonight going. And we pulled all the tomatoes off that we could, and I fell really ill, didn't I, Papa? Mm -hmm. What happened to Mommy? You haven't been feeling well. Yeah, I started having problems with my heart and my blood pressure and different things, didn't I? Yes. So, Mommy rested for a few days. Meanwhile, the tomatoes, I was handing them out to neighbors and doing what I could, and this is what's left of the ones for eating. But you got saved a lot of them. I saved a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I had to let some cucumbers go and stuff, but yeah, I wasn't allowed to actually get up and can. So, um, between methods here, I'm just resting. In my 16-quart so stainless steel stock pot, I have my jars that have been simmering with the lid on and a couple of dashes of vinegar in here for about 35 to 40 minutes. I've just been letting that kind of sit there and kind of bubble away. I gotta turn this down. This is way too hot. Okay, and here I've got the canner water filled up. I've got a splash of vinegar in here. I think I better go ahead and put a splash in just in case. That'll keep your jars nice and clear and clean. It also helps to sterilize the jars and keep them clean in the canner. Uh, this is uh, my first round in the canning season with the canner, not the water bath canner, but with the actual pressure canner. So I've cleaned this all up and I've put just a little bit of uh, oil on the ring and wiped it back off so that it slides easily here on the canner. Makes your rubber ring last longer. All right, back here we have some delicious, I, I, just some sort of pasta sauce that I made up, but it's actually really good. It's got peppers and onion. I used my onion powder, I was actually out of onions. So I had to use my onion powder and my garlic powder in it, but it tasted, it tastes great, doesn't it, John? Yes. Absolutely delicious. Let me see if I can't show it to you here. And we've been letting this simmer for almost five hours. It's been almost five hours this has been simmering. Peppers from the garden, onions, garlic, my homemade uh, Italian seasoning spices, a little pinch of sugar or two, and some salt and pepper and that just has the perfect bite to it it's delicious oh and I actually put in a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice because I thought I was going to water bath can this but I changed my mind I I didn't or I was freezing it I still put a little lemon juice in it but in this case I decided I am going to pressure can my tomatoes I always pressure can my tomatoes and I decided I'm not going to do all this work and be sick as I am uh, physically just sick and there's a reason why I'm so physically sick we're going to get into that in the next video but right now I'm just trying to get through canning season I have a beautiful garden and I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to let it go to waste I mean I can my food it's what I do see I ran out of green beans this year but so last year I had to buy some jars of green beans some cans of green beans but you can see here that I can my food. My cabinets are full of my canned goods, right down to what doesn't fit and still on here. This is my grapes from my own vines. This is red grape juice. And this right here is the white grape juice. And it darkened up, so I'm gonna have to figure out, before we eat that, I wanna figure out what happened there. I'm, I don't know if you've got white grapes and you've canned white grapes, did it darken up on you as well? Uh, we opened a jar and it tastes fine so okay so this is almost like this is almost like a a pasta sauce pizza sauce it's just like a, a sauce base almost like a stewed tomato but has a little bit more flavor like a pizza sauce or a pasta sauce would have so i wrote the recipe down and i will put that down below and i just called it my pasta sauce base and like a marinara sauce almost it's absolutely delicious 
and you just leave the pills on it's easy to make just let it simmer and I made that with the um, Italian tomatoes from my garden and some yellow pear tomatoes to kind of get me a little bit more huh? there's yellow pear tomatoes in here as well and because they don't have as much acidity of course you want to add that lemon juice to it if you're water bath canning but again I've never had a jar fail me and the reason being is because I pressure can tomatoes tomatoes is the number one thing that people have that mold and fail on them and make them sick it's tomato juice products because people water bath can it you just don't know that acidity level and unless you have those test strips at home you just don't know every tomato is different like I said yellow tomatoes have less acidity than red tomatoes so without you know scientifically getting into it just uh, just go ahead and pressure can your tomatoes if you want to be sure you can go either route whatever you're comfortable with but if you have a lot of failed uh, jars of anything with tomato in it then you'll know why go ahead and pressure can it and, and I will be pressure canning this at 10 pounds of pressure and I will be pressure canning this 35 minutes for quarts and 25 minutes for pints okay 10 pounds of pressure and I'm going to be doing the same thing for the tomato juice the broth going to get the same thing and I've added some um, about three tablespoons of lemon juice to my tomato juice as well because again I thought I was going to water bath can I had this going with the jars in it and thought I was just going to cheat but I just changed my mind I said why should I do that why should I waste my hard work in my summer garden when I know that it just it's a it's this is a fail safe for me okay all right so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to set you up here and we're going to start oh come over here quick I forgot I got my dehydrator going of all of my wonderful sweet snacking peppers that one's my empty one there's another one and there's another one we're just going to kind of come in here and kind of move them around here okay all right and I just have this set between 125 and 135 and mine is a Weston people have been asking me what kind of dehydrator I have it's called a Weston food dehydrator and uh, it's not an expensive one at all I got it off eBay somebody got it for a wedding present used it maybe one time or not at all I don't know it was like brand new when I got it and I picked it up for $25 and it is really nice and then these little sheets let me get the one here that didn't have anything on it these little sheets of paper came on a roll I pre-cut them to fit and they're great for making like fruit leathers and um, and meat leathers and stuff like that on there like beef jerky pull out my jars make sure they come straight from the hot water directly in there we go oh I forgot my gloves rubber tip gardening gloves aren't those cute I love these all right they're, they're perfect for it so remember what we're going to do here and I'm hoping you can hear me over that give it a good stir right here so we get everything coming out evenly in, the, in all the jars there's a little bit of seeds in this but that's fine it's so much easier using this than my, the old-fashioned way of using the ricer like I used to use oh my gosh it's so much easier slice them up put them in the basket let them go for 60 minutes that's an hour you know just let it go I'm sure you knew 60 minutes was an hour but I'm just saying all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run about a pint of juice through here first this sterilizes the spigot and then we're gonna pour it back in and boil it for about 10 to 15 more minutes just get some of the water of the tomatoes off too some that steam okay, water. Right. okay and I'm gonna take this and I'm pouring it back in it was absolutely beautiful and I'm setting that jar aside it's no longer sterile I'm just gonna let this uh, boil back up here for a few minutes and then we'll be right back you can hear the humming of the dehydrator going and now we've let this boil kind of simmer around and kind of steam around here for a few minutes you can leave the lid on keep it nice and steamy in there that's fine but i wanted it so you could see it i like this because it has a glass top lid but this is so much easier than using the hose that you have to put the little pin off and on 
I love this thing. All right, we want to measure it to a quarter of an inch. And this picket can be hot, so be careful. A little bit more. There you go. Now you do not have to debubble this, but it's always good to go ahead and do it. Get your napkins. We're just going to dip down into this clean lid water and we're not going to double dip that. Pull this kind of out a little bit. And we're just going to clean off that top. Any little seed, anything like that can keep your uh, thing from sealing. definitely a seed on there. I was trying to get that little seed off there. There we go. I just make the kind of like a little tent shape there. There you go. And I dip my finger in the water, run it around the rim, checking for any cracks or breaks, and it also helps with the seal. My fingers are very clean. I've been doing this for hours. Washing dishes. And, and I do line up my our thing here finger tight which is just that right there it's finger tight depends which lids it is if it's the new ones again they went back to more gum on them so you might want you to see how beautiful that was Can you see that in that stunning red just beautiful in its happy little home right there. You want to make sure that your water in your canner is the same temperature as your juice coming out of your steamer. So just barely simmering. I know the glass is tempered, but you don't want it to break. Don't give it a reason to break. And it helps keep that juice at the same temperature that it's coming out of the steamer. Alright, and we're just going to keep going that way until we get the can filled up. Remember, you can can multiple things up at the same time. Just make sure the canning times are the same. Now this is a little thicker, so you do have to debubble this. And I'm hoping you can see this. Oh, no, I did not let you see that, did I? I'm sorry. Alright. Now here, I just put in this nice thick tomato sauce. It's a lot thicker, so go ahead and debubble it. And because there's so many seeds and things, we want to be sure and wipe off the lid off this one too. Let me get a lid ready here. And I can can these at the same time because they're both tomato products and there's nothing in here that cans a longer time than the tomatoes. So everything's good. Make sure everything's off that. Dip my finger in. Check for cracks. Get that water seal on there. Line up my, my lid here. getting a little wobbly that can be dangerous make sure you never do this with the kids or pets in the room or husbands if they're being naughty so there you go and this is really similar to a chili sauce that I make and that recipe is online as well and it's excellent with your beans and cornbread but isn't that just beautiful and that goes right down in the canner with the tomato juice and we're just going to keep right on going here wipe the rim just don't forget to debubble i can't tell you how important that is that will keep your lid from buckling and you also don't want to underfill a jar and you also don't want to overfill a jar be sure and follow the rules
It's just like an assembly line. Again, pick that up under the shoulder here so you don't, you never want to pick it up by this ring so it doesn't pop off. Again, another beautiful jar and no tipping. All right, so now this is our chance to get to know you guys. A lot of you guys are new. Why don't you guys write us a message below? Let us know that you've been watching. Let us know what you're canning this week. Are you canning something? Are you doing something special? Maybe you're taking a vacation like we do on Rambling Roads. Tom and I are thinking this week it's time for another trip. <laughs> We're almost needing it, aren't we, Papa? All right, so we have a little bit left here to can up. We got plenty of room for it here in the canner. And remember, all right, be sure and blow through the vent pipe. Yeah, we did have something in it that time. That's the first time. I thought I blew through it. All right, again, once again, I told you that I put a little bit of uh, oil right here, just a little bit, and then kind of wiped it a little bit back off again. This helps for when we settle it. Line up your V's here. You see how easy that moves back and forth? No, the steam does not come out of it when, when I do that. It just makes my uh, ring last longer, my seal. Because this is in here, I'm going to take all the pints up to the quart because this is a pint and a half and they don't have times for pints and a half. So I'm going to take it up to the quart timing and then these little these little pints here will go along for the happy ride. Okay? So always take the upper number in the canner. I'll leave a comment below if I've taught you how to can or if I've helped push you to that point where you're ready to use your canner. Um, if you need any help, a lot of you out there, I've helped a lot of you uh, start canning and you're just canning sensations now, you know? So, and that's what we want to hear. We want to hear that you're going to go out there and you're going to finally get the nerve from our videos to go give it a try. Alright? Anyway, this is our little homestead, Janie Pendleton with my husband, John Pendleton. We love you and we'll be back in just a minute to show you our end results. Alright? These will sit in the canner for about 5-10 uh, about minutes before we take off the lid. Usually I'll part the lid, let it steam out, let them sit there for a few minutes, let them acclimate a little bit to the room, but you don't want to do that for very long. Uh, usually five, ten minutes is the longest, and that's only because I have the air conditioner on. And then you'll want to lay them out on the glass onto a towel on your countertop so they do not break. Even though they're tempered glass, you don't want to sit something that's been under pressure like that onto a cold stone or a cold countertop. You don't want to ruin your countertop either. So, but yeah, if one of these break, uh, it'll go everywhere. It will explode. So, um, and when you remove these, just be sure and lift these up by that glass shoulder ring, not the not the lid or the ring, but by the glass shoulder that's underneath that screw that screw band. I can't uh, tell you about that enough. Okay. So I hope this has helped you learn how to can. Okay, and you can see this is steaming. You don't want to get your hand too close because steam can burn you. But I don't know if you can see it right up there. Can you see it? It's kind of hitting up there in the light a little bit. See that? That's a nice steam going right there. So we're going to adjust our heat here down just a little bit. It's been going for 10 minutes. We're going to go ahead and put that little 10 pound weight on there. 15 pounds if you live above a thousand feet above sea level or over. I'm under that thousand feet above sea level, so I'm at 10 pounds of pressure. The lock here is already up. This is very hot. And we're going to keep this up at a higher temperature until we build pressure into this canner. It'll take about 10 minutes, and we'll be right back. We'll be seeing some swaying really going here in a minute. Okay, we got a nice rocking motion going. You can hear it building up pressure. The lock is up. Now we're going to come over here and we're just going to slowly drop that temperature down and I slowly drop it down to about three and a half. About right there. So I'm going to hang around, make sure it keeps on doing its little jiggle. Alright, that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and set the timer for the 35 minutes since I have a one and a half pint jar in here with my pint. I'm going to go with that bigger number, and I'm going to do it for the quart size. Normally I don't have to do that, but that's the jars that I had in the kitchen, so that's what I use. Alright, we'll see you back here 
in 35 minutes. Okay, we're going to just turn it right off here. Do not remove the weight. You do not want to drop the pressure in this fast. It has to come down as it cools in room temperature. Let's calm down for a second here. Pick it up. Keep my face away from this area. Move it over here a bit. Let that come down. Just stop rocking. Do not remove the weight. I'm going to say it again. And don't remove that weight until this pin drops. And that'll be about 45 minutes from now. Okay, we're going to open this up very carefully. Making sure you shield your face with the lid so you don't get. Don't want to get that steam in your face. When we pick these up, same thing. We're going to pick these up by the edge of the glass. We're going to put it down and slide up the jar and then squeeze. And we're picking it up by this little glass lip here, not by the ring, or down by the ring. Isn't that beautiful? And that is just absolutely stunning. It's just beautiful. Got a little bit of leakage there, but that's fine. Here's one of the um, pasta bases. Turned up just beautiful. There it went. I guessed it right. I guessed that one right. Let's see if I can guess another one right. I think this one right here is going to go next. I love that sound. But at least now you got to see what it what it looks like and sounds like, and what when other canners talk about that sound of that ping that we love so much. That's just saying that it's sealing, and that is a very good thing. There it went. Did you see that one? <laughs> and then this one right here is about ready to go as well. Both of these right here are about ready to go. So they're sealing really fast. That's excellent. There it went. <laughs> All right. This is Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton. We want to thank you for coming along for the ride. This is how... Oops, there went the other one. I got. That's where we're at. Be sure and subscribe. Be sure and stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up here on our little homestead. All right. Blessings.